And we're back here on another episode of Kicking It Real, our podcast where we talk about movies and all that fucking good little TV fucking gems that made us the freaks that we are. Because really, I mean, why else would our brains be so fucked up if, I don't know, Courage the Cowardly Dog didn't exist? It's just some fucking awful shit. It's time for another episode of Kicking It Real. <laughs> And we're back for another episode of Kicking It Real, our movie, TV show, anime, all that shit podcast. We just talk about media and shit that fucking makes us go crazy. But speaking of media, it's horror month, and uh, I want to talk about just a, a film that we've all probably seen at least once, and definitely just, I don't know, fits the fucking vibe of this whole show and this channel, and that is the goddamn Shaun of the Dead. Uh, oh yeah <laughs> the first in the cornetto trilogy with simon Pegg, uh nick frost edgar wright all that god damn what a gem of a movie it's one of those things where anytime it's on i can't look away because it's just fucking incredible um it's just like such a bizarre take it's got that dry fucking british humor the fucking bar scene with queen like uh the fucking when they're throwing the vinyl at the fucking zombies like I feel like <laughs> Shaun of the Dead pretty much encapsulate it like what it would be like if the three of us experienced a zombie apocalypse. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Right? <laughs> like we wouldn't know. What to, idiot. Yeah, we wouldn't know what we were. We would like accidentally survive, and not because of any of our competency or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, fucking hell. Um, yeah, I mean, what what's y'all's favorite part? I mean, I guess I mean, there's a bunch of shit. Most of it takes place in the fucking bar, but like. That friendship specifically between Simon Pegg and fucking Nick yeah. Frost, that's yeah. this shit right fucking here. Like, um, I mean, one of my favorite things about just the Cornetto trilogy in general is like the little reoccurring inside jokes. Like, I think it right because it's in Shaun of the Dead where he, he does the they're looking at the garden fences oh. and he tries to jump over it, just like falls over, and they repeat that in Hot Fuzz too. <laughs> What, what's the matter, Danny? You've never been fucking hopped a fence before, and he's doing, like, the flips and shit? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Well, but that, that's in and Hot, hot Fuzz, Fuzz. Yeah, he does yeah. all the flips. But in Shot Dead, he literally tries to go for it and just jumps on it and just, like, slams over Dude, there's so many people in that movie, too. Like, Bill Nye yeah. is in that. Like, fucking... Bill and, Nye was... Oh, yeah. Shit, yeah, he's the, the dickhead dad or whatever. And, oh, my God. Yeah, there's a ton of cameos. Yeah. And, like, the reoccurring joke thing, I love this scene where it's, like, Stop hanging out with your boyfriend. He's not my boyfriend. And he gives him the beer. It's like, thanks, babe. Like, yeah, yeah, so good. <laughs> I just feel like everything about it. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, my God. I really. Just Simon Pegg and, and Nick Frost together in every movie they do. Like, they just have, like, the perfect chemistry. They're, they're the British version of Will Ferrell and John C. Riley. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it's yeah. the most, like, kind of like, we're on the top of, like, of like them being best friends. I feel like it's a very like real friendship like that, especially adult friendships. Like, it, like think about college or like when you're living with roommates for a bit, it's so that exact thing. It's like you're two fucking dickheads hanging out. You're drinking, just playing video games. You walk into the living room and we've all done that. Lazy somewhere. piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, like, even like Ryan and I lived in Brooklyn for a while together and that was a fucking great time, but it was literally just us. Like we had the living room right in the middle of all our beds and we yeah. walk out and I'd be like, you know, I'd be smoking a fucking joint and Ryan would be playing fucking like Final Fantasy and we just chill and vibe and fucking have a good time. And yeah, there were zombies yeah. outside, but it still brought us together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, that fucking Shot of the Dead, though. Fucking like, I, if I can rewatch it every year, I fucking will. It, but yeah, I oh, just love it. Um, I, I, I just know in a real zombie scenario, like I would probably just hide in my apartment and cry. Like, <laughs> there's no way I'm getting out there. Yeah, I, I have mean, no skills. And zombies unlock doors. In some movies, like Walking Dead, there's one that can. There's like I don't know. That's the thing about zombies. It's like everybody's got different canon. And I want to talk about Dawn of the Dead, the reboot, at one point. But we'll do that at a different time. Um, overall, and then of course there's the bar scene, the bar fight with fucking uh, Queen playing. Yeah. Oh, well, oh that's... fuck with the song. Don't stop me! Is it don't stop me now? Yes, don't stop me now. And they're yeah. all yeah. and they fucking break out <laughs> yeah. with a single. So okay, when they're in the circle. Just... <laughs> yeah i guess like overall really you know ryan yeah. we were talking about what we do in a zombie apocalypse and i think you know really at the end of the day what we would do is we go to the winchester have a pub have a pub 
have a pint have a, have a, have a, have and wait for this to all blow over. But, yeah, uh, exactly. Speak, yeah, speaking of blowing things over like that fucking horrible, fu- horrible fuck up I just did, let's talk about some spooky shit. Because, you know, we went from the comedy in the later end of horror month. Yeah. Omar, you have a yearly rewatch. Trick yep. or treat. I've never seen it. Go off. So I, I go oh, ham. Yeah. I go ham in October where I, I'll will try to watch a scary thing every day. Literally every day we'll watch either a show or like a. It could be like a kids one, like Coraline or something. Oh, or that's like, not. That's fucking. Or good like Lord. just follow up. Like today we just watched The Witch, um, which is all right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was really slow, but okay. the one I watch every year. I haven't watched. I'm gonna watch it Friday maybe or something. Is a uh, trick or treat. No. no, is that with Sam? Is that the yeah Sam? So basically, it's kind of like a love letter to Halloween movies or just like the Halloween vibe in general. It's I think it's like five short stories, all like interwoven into like one movie plot, and they're all like on the same this one night of Halloween basically, um, and then it like all culminates into this character um, Sam who's like a this like pumpkin headed little critter. Um, so it's like an anthology. So like you're saying like. It's not like an anthology like Love, Death, and Robots and the animations and shit. It all ties together like at the It's end. all in the same town and the same night. That's like, so clever. Stories. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. and like, are, you, it, it, are you seeing different perspectives from like different people? No, no. It's just like things going on in the same night. And then there's like little bits that like connect together kind of thing. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah and like at the end, it kind of like all comes back around. Um, but it's it's so great too because it's like it takes like every genre of horror movie too. Like there's like, like the classic like zombie. There's like the serial killer. There's like you know like slasher, um, right. well, vampires or whatever. Like so they it kind of like ha- tells a, a different story for each one. And it has it ha- definitely has that kind of like folktale vibe where it feels like these stories are almost like urban legends in this town kind of thing. Um, Is this available to stream anywhere? I think it's on Prime right now. Let me check. Um. And, like, the best thing is, like, I, I always think that, like, the best Halloween movies are ones that have, like, a solid mascot. And so, like, having this little character be, like, kind of, like, the the, the spirit of, like, this whole event. Like, he's not necessarily interacting the entire time, but it's just, like, he's around kind of thing. So he's... Al- like, maybe causing it. Oh, so you don't like, kind of know the whole time. Yeah, that's very... Yeah. Well, I'm not going to spoil it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fucking sick, though. Yeah, I think I think it might be on Prime. Quick, quick side sidebar here. Yeah. You mentioned The Witch. Is that the one that came out a couple years ago where, like, nothing really happens and it's, like, kind Two of, uh, <laughs> like colo- yeah, colonial? Oh, yeah, okay. like, it's, it's like, a good artsy movie. Just the right. ending wasn't that satisfying. So. The Vavitch. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, it had cool aspects to it and, like, it was really well shot and all that, but. Yeah, which I can appreciate, especially from a visual standpoint. Yeah. He's, he's an art house director. It- uh, if the story doesn't follow, then like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna watch it again. Yeah, it's, it's like a, an art piece, I guess, if you would. Yeah, like it's it feels really vague. It, it's like yeah, yeah. Um, he did the lighthouse too, which is also really vague. Okay, I still haven't seen Who it. Is it? And, and he also did uh, the recent one he did was Norseman. That Norseman looks Northman. sick. I want to see oh, that. Oh, so I just bad. watched that on on the plane. Oh, that really? Was actually, pretty good. That was good? Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, his movies are definitely uh, really slow and, like, artsy. I want to see yeah, that. Yeah, it has, so uh, what's his name? The Northman. Oh, uh, no, it's got, like, Skarsgård. It's got, like, a fuck ton yeah. of people. Skarsgård, yeah. Nicole Kidman, right? Ian? Ian? There's so many of them at this Ian's point. Good? I have fucking no idea. It's the whole family. They're all in show business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, it's almost like, you know, if you're a celebrity child, things are really easy for you. Anyway. Yeah. Dude, he is act in that movie though he's he, really good he's good so, yeah i mean they're, they're all great actors i love yeah what's the father's name the one that's in ev- like everything like he's in dune he's he the was baron in dune. yeah the baron guy yeah i can't remember he's, I, all i ever think of is isn't alex skazgard um it pennywise yeah, yeah yeah pennywise no i think alex is the one that uh, that's in the northman movie. Oh, okay uh there's too many of them yeah. Yeah, dude, I know. <laughs> that, that, there's yeah. like, there's a sister too, I think. Oh yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. I fucking... Oh, Bill Skazgard is. Yeah. Is it okay? Bill, yeah, yeah, it's the dad, yeah. right? 
Yeah, dude, he's in like Goodwill Hunting too, and he's in like fucking every Marvel. He's in fuck like his career is insane. So, I was uh, thinking about this recently because I was watching a lot of stuff like Stranger Things with uh, Maya Hawk. Like there are so many actors who are just the children of other actors. Same like with uh, Maya Hawk is Maya. Ethan Hawk and um, uh, what's her fucking name? Uma Thurman's daughter. Yeah. Really. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Lily. Well, the one that always gets me is uh is Howie from or he, wait. Huey. Jack. Howie? Yeah, no, it's from Huey the from the boys. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Dennis Quaid. Yeah, is uh, oh, Dennis right. Quaid right. and Meg Ryan's kid. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's fucking wild, dude. And then, like, of course, every band that has a kid, it's like, oh, why is Green Day's kid's band all right? Why is Slipknot's kid already have a band on the tour of Slipknot? It's just, you know. <laughs> well, we're not saying that because we're envious, but. <laughs> Speaking of horrible so things, I wouldn't be. I mean, no, no offense, but Slipknot Sons band is kind of mid. I would say the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of things that aren't mid and are just like horrible and fucking just ruin your life and ruin your sleep pattern and just fucking make everything awful and make you have night terrors. Uh, Ryan, you want to talk about an awful, awful film that's fucking actually pretty great from a horror standpoint, but it gives me nightmares to this day. The Conjuring. Yeah, it's, it's it's the unattested modern classic of horror movies. It's the the exorcist of our generation. Don't watch The Conjuring Three though. That one sucks. Oh yeah, <laughs> most franchises, the further you get into them, the worse they get. Yeah. <laughs> There's like the Nun, Annabelle, the Nun Two, the Nun Rising, the Run Returns, the Nun. Yeah, right. Because The Conjuring's yeah. the one where it's like it's like it's got the whole universe around it too. Yeah. Like, all those other movies, like, all relate to it. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. But, Ryan, go on, King. I mean, I I don't really have much to say about it, because if you haven't seen it, then go stop this right now and go watch it. I'm pretty sure it's available for streaming on, like, four or five different services. What, what do you guys you think have... about the whole fact that it's uh, based on a true story? I mean, it had to happen, yeah. right? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, like, like I mean, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, like I mean, like they, they, they do. I think it's at the end of that one. It's the Amy the credits. They show the actual recordings. Yeah. And you're like, how the fuck did this little girl make this voice like this? Like she has like a straight demon voice. A any movie that's based on a true story, I'm always like, it never actually is <laughs> hesitant about. Are you telling me the Fast and Furious? It's, it's like it's like one one scene. In yeah. Like, like him, him walking into a doorway was the yeah, real part. The big, that, that was the part that was based on a true story. <laughs> Wait, are you telling me that the fucking part in E.T. when the guy flies up on the bike with that strange... Oh, no, E.T. E e was real. Okay, don't scare me like that, you know? That was a documentary, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's a World War II <laughs> film. Um, yeah. yeah, The Conjuring, though, man. I saw that in fucking college with my wife, and for, like, a week straight, I had night terrors, because, like... Spoilers, 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 spoilers. Um, there's so much like imagery with like shadow work they do, like when the fucking girl woman jumps off the fucking dresser, or like when the two girls are in the room yeah. and it just slowly pans up and she's right there, but like out of focus, kind of. Oh yeah, they're just so good. That fucked me up, or when the um I believe it's one of the um like detectives, 